I'm your host, DOS350, and I would like to welcome you to a very special show that I like to call Serial Review. Now, in this very special episode of Serial Review, we're going to be looking at rice bubbles. Kellogg's official rice bubbles. As you can see, I got the rice bubbles here, and we're just going to jump straight into it. Make sure to smack that like and the bell button for more rice bubbles, news and developments as they happen, exclusively on DOS 350 Legit. Now, straight off the bat, this is a 410 G's packet of rice bubbles. Some might call it family sized. Uh, it doesn't say that, but that's just what it might be in some uh, neighborhoods. Now, looking closely at the front side of the packet, we can see our close friends. Snap, that guy. Crackle, oh, uh, yeah, Snap, Crackle, and Pop. They're in order, right? Crackle, the middle guy, and Pop, the funny looking one. Let's go to zoom in and enhance on Pop. He's like, oh damn, he's got his hands out to the side, like, it's not my problem, guys. Snap is looking pretty happy with himself. They're all looking at the rice bubbles, I guess. This third one, like, I guess they're all dressed pretty normally, except for the stupid hats. It's like, god damn. But can you blame them? It's like they're meant to be little elves or something, snapping and crackling inside the rice bubbles. I remember the ads when I was a little Pablo, running around, going, ah, oh, this and that, snap, crackle, and pop. And I'd listen, I'd put my ear to the bowl and go, oh god damn, I'm hearing and popping and snapping and crackling. But that's outside of the scope of this video. Moving straight along. It says in a big bold red type 7 vitamins and minerals. It contains 7 vitamins and minerals. And no artificial colors or flavors. It's Kellogg's Rice Bubbles, 410Gs, and up the top it's got a little health star breakdown. This rice bubbles just so I managed to achieve a three-star health rating so it's not as high as wheat bix or uh, vita brits or oats but it's probably higher than cocoa puffs puffs excuse me and fruity loopy loops with the toucan but that's way beyond the scope of this video so we'll just say that the health star rating includes 1600 kj of energy, sat fat 0.1 g's, sugars 8.7 g's. Now look, I don't know the breakdown, but that's like that's like a percentile of the whole content. There's quite a bit of sugar in this, but that's just the way I like it. Smash that like and bell button if that's the way you like it as well. Now, moving on, we got sodium. And this is per 100 Gs, by the way, so it's not even the whole thing. So it's got four times that. It's got like... It's got like 36 Gs of sugar. It's like 8% sugar or something. I mean, god damn. That's why it's so spicy. I'm moving straight along. You got 415 milli of uh, sodium. A salt, for anyone who didn't know, is a quick science tip. An iron, 8.6 mg's. And it's got a little description high. So it's high in iron for all those muscle men and ladies out there eating rice bubbles for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And it's Kellogg's. And that pretty much sums up the forward-facing shelfy advertising face of the packet that kids look at and go mom 
Dad, I want a rice bubble with snap and pop and crackle. And the parent says, oh, well, let me just look at the health rating. And they go, oh, let's see here, blah, blah. And maybe they get it and maybe they don't. Maybe they got to eat, uh... What's a bad breakfast? Like, uh... I don't know. Like a boiled turnip for breakfast. Maybe that's what some families have. No salt and pepper allowed. But I'm getting off topic here and outside of the scope of this video, so we'll just move straight along. Up the top of the packet, this side, it's got a website, kellogg.com.au. So there's no S, it's just Kellogg. And that's just the way I like it. It says, puffed grains of rice. In case you didn't know what a rice bubble was, it's a puffed grain of rice. Puffed, like a cigarette. And it's best before the 11th of the 11th, 2020. Got a little code there, it says, this product unopened will keep fresh at least until end of month, indicated if stored in normal <laughs> dry conditions. It's a little disclaimer. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to hold it straight. The goddamn best before was on like a 10 degree angle. It's like they can't make it straight. Someone twisted the packet in the factory and they couldn't stamp it aligned properly. That doesn't matter too much. It doesn't detract from the puffed grains of rice. Moving straight along. We're going to do this side, the uh, nutrition information breakdown side. Now let's just get straight into it. it. says here, let me just get a good shot here, so we really know it's rice bubble. Alright. Kellogg's rice bubbles. It's got a little, let's enhance on that, it's a little logo for some stupid health foundation or something. And it says, approved food product. FODMAP friendly. If you follow a low FODMAP diet, this product has been certified FODMAP friendly. So you can enjoy it with confidence. God damn. It's like, oh shit, I'm confident about my FODMAP. I'm a big FODMAP fatso freak. And I'm just confident that this is going to be okay. Or something like that. It's like, I, I being a, uh, you know, up with the with it hip kind of guy. I've heard a FODMAP before. I don't know what it stands for and I don't care either and I'm not interested but I know it's meant to be some healthy shit. It's like I think a FODMAP is bad and so they call it FODMAP so you're aware of it or something. I don't really know I'm just kind of making it up but it sounds bad. It's like FODMAP. It must stand for something. I'm not going to look it up, because as I said, I just don't care. But some FODMAP freaks out here might be, uh, that might be, uh, you know, the thing that seals the deal for them. They were thinking, oh shit, I was going to get my specialized FODMAP food, but Rice Bubbles is in the club too, so oh, they're pretty good. And they go and tell all their FODMAP friends, did you hear? The FODMAP society says that goddamn Rice Bubbles makes the cut and they all say oh yeah moving straight along underneath that it repeats itself it's a three health star rating and it goes on to say what is health star rating now look it's pretty self-explanatory i think it's like the goddamn energy rating thing on a dishwasher or a dryer or something it's like the more the better you know it's not rocket science but let's just see what they have to say it says the Health Star Rating is a government-led initiative that provides an easy way to compare the nutritional profile of packaged foods so you can make informed choices. Put simply, the more stars, the healthier the choice. Foods may rate from half to a five-star rating. Together with other important nutrition information on this pack, it's important, guys, like the serve size and nutrients per serve, the Health Star Rating is another way for you to make the best choices for you and your family. 
in confidence with the FODMAPs and the seven vitamins and deadly minerals. But that's moving straight along. All right. Now it's got the nutrition breakdown down here. I'm just gonna quickly burst through it because it's kind of like we kind of already read it. All right. We're only gonna read. Okay. They're cheating the goddamn system here. They've got servings per package, 11. Serving size, 35 Gs. And that just so happens to be one and a quarter metric cups. Don't know how much a metric cup is. Is it 250 mil or is that a goddamn Imperial Palpatine cup? Make sure to smash that comment button if you know what a metric cup is. And let me know, because I don't care. But I want to hear what you think. Only on DOS 350 legit. Now... Let's just say that the, um, yeah, they're cheating because they got a per serve with half cup reduced fat milk. They don't even give you a full cream, fully fledged and featured milk option. They just say, oh no, we expect the little Pablorettas and Pablos to use reduced fat milk. That watery, stupid shit. It's like, oh god damn. So we're just going to look at, uh, per 100 G, that makes the most sense. So energy, 1600. Protein, 8 G. Fat, total, saturated. 0.5, total, 1, saturated. Carbohydrate, 83.9 G. So out of 100 G, it's 84 G's carbohydrate. And that's just the way I like it. Carbs are good for the um, mind, body, and soul. That's what I was taught. And sugar's 8.7. So it's about eight and a half percent sugar. Snap, crackle, and pop are sugared out of their mind. Look at them. That's why they got their big grins on their faces. And dietary fiber, 2.3 Gs, and sodium, 415 milli. Now, that's pretty all right. And now we've got a um, vitamin breakdown. So. Uh, vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, 0.79 milli. Riboflavin, well that's just B2, it's like B1 and B2, the bananas in pajamas. That's beyond the scope of this video. Ah, uh, that's uh, 0.5, ah, uh, excuse me, 1.21 milli. Niacin, I've heard of that one. 7.1 milli. Vitamin C, this is a good one that gets in orange juice and uh, lemons, uh, 28.6 milli, folate, well, that's 142 UG, I don't know what that is, I've seen it before, but I just don't care, iron, 8.6 milli, and zinc, like they put in the telephone, 5.1 milli, and it says here, with the little disclaimers, hashes, and stars, it says, Cup measurement is approximate. It's only to be used as a guide. If you've got any specific dietary requirements, please weigh your serving. Okay, we're not even going to talk about that. Okay, we are. Let's face it, there's some big guy out there measuring out his rice bubbles. They probably count them individually with little tweezers. They go, one, I'm allowed to have 85 rice bubbles for breakfast. Two, three, it's like, oh, damn. Have a Kit Kat, guys. Just shut up. But that's beyond the scope of this video. Um, percentage daily intakes are based on an average adult diet of 8,700 kJ. Percentage recommended dietary intake, Australia, New Zealand. Well, that's just the way we do it. They got different percents over in uh, Taiwan and uh, Holland and all those places. It's like, I don't know. It's not quite the same as us over here in the harsh, burning environment that this that we live in, in this modern world, as Dilma would say, Mr. Dilma. We haven't forgotten about those guys here at DOS 350 Legit, they're still fresh in my mind. Alright, moving straight along. Ingredients. This is what we've all been waiting for, so you know what you're really getting when you buy a packet of rice bubbles. So. Here's, here goes nothing, as they might say. Ingredients. Whole white rice. So it's not jasmine or basmati. 
it's uh, white rice. It's not brown rice. It's um, 90% whole white rice. Then next they got sugar, salt, barley, malt, extract, vitamin C, niacin, riboflavin, thiamine, folate, minerals, iron, and zinc oxide. And it says here in bold, contains cereals containing gluten. May contain traces of peanuts and or tree nuts. So anyone out there with a nut allergy where they start choking to death when they have a peanut butter um, steer clear of Kellogg's rice bubbles and consult your doctor before taking a bite make sure to tap that like and bell button all right moving straight along we're gonna do the big old backside now look mm, it says up here up the top other side it says get cooking with the kids so they don't give you much of a life story, they instead just fill you up with recipes. But we're going to have a look at them anyway and just see. It says, Nutrition Info Recipes and Promotions Online at kellogg.com.au Now, so the first one, we've got Caramel Treats, they're called. And then it says it makes about 24. I guess this packet makes about 24. It says here, Ingredients. A uh, quarter of a cup of margarine? Are you serious? That sounds disgusting. Can't they use butter? 125g soft caramels. 300g white marshmallows. I don't mind using a whole bag of marshmallows, but God help us if we ever had a butter or full cream milk. Um, six cups Kellogg's rice bubbles cereal. And it says method. Melt the margarine in a large saucepan over low heat. Add the car uh, soft caramels. I missed that. 125 G's worth. I don't know. Maybe I didn't miss it. Doesn't matter. Uh, melt the margarine. Add the caramels and the marshmallows. Stir until completely melted. Remove from heat. Add Kellogg's rice bubbles. Cereal and combine until rice bubbles are well coated. Using a battered spoon. A buttered, excuse me, spatula or waxed paper. Press the mixture evenly into a 32 and a half by 22 and a half centimeter pan coated with cooking oil spray. Cut into five centimeter squares when cool. But it didn't say to. Oh, so you've already heated the caramel, I guess. So that's how it's cooked. You've heated the margarine. And they, put, they give you a pretty exact pan size to put it in. It's like 21 and a quarter centimeter. It's like, god damn. I don't have that, guys. All right. Well, look, I would try a um, Rice Bubbles Kellogg's TM registered goddamn caramel treat if someone gave it to me. But there's no way a little old DOS 350 underscore legit is going to go out and make one. I don't have the pan, I don't have the guts, and I just don't even care. They don't look that good. They look alright. I probably had one before. It's probably like an LCM bar, if you know what that is. Or equivalent of that. Sounds like it. Alright. Chocolate crispy biscuits. That looks a bit nice. Ingredients. Half a cup of margarine. They're loving that margarine. Half a cup. One cup of caster sugar. That's a lot of caster sugar. Two teaspoons vanilla extract, one and a quarter cups self-raising flour, two cups Kellogg's rice bubble cereal, half cup milk chalk bits, one cup, half cup white chalk bits, a uh, quarter cup chopped hazelnut, in brackets optional. So like if you got a hazelnut problem, do not add them, it's optional. And then five tablespoons chocolate spread. So that's like Nutella, or nut Nutalex. If you know what that is, make sure to smash the bell button. Alright, and it says method. Preheat the oven. So this is a baking one. You're baking with power. It says, preheat that thing to 180. Beat margarine and sugar in a small bowl with an electric mixer. Until pale in colour. Gradually... It didn't 
Oh no, egg. There's the egg. I think I didn't read out the egg before, but who cares? It says, uh, gradually add egg and vanilla extract, beating well after each addition. Stir in sifted flour, mix until well combined. Add Kellogg's rice bubble cereal, chalk bits and hazelnuts. In brackets, if using. It's like, god damn. Don't remind me, guys. I won't use it if I don't want to, okay? Mix well using hands. Spoon level... Uh, mix well using hands. Okay. Spoon level tablespoons of mixture onto baking paper lined oven trays. Three. Bake in oven for about 12 to 15 minutes, or until lightly browned. Stand for 15 minutes on trays, cool on wire racks. Sandwich biscuits together with chocolate spread. Store in air kite container. Alright, so you gotta sandwich them together. I didn't even notice, but if you can... Let's see if we can get an enhance on that 350. It's kind of like a double look. It's like a bit of a Monte Carlo, but with rice bubbles. And that'd probably be pretty nice. Like, I would have one of that, because the rice bubbles would make it crunchy. And uh, chocolate would make it juicy. It's like, that'd be a pretty good biscuit. Make sure to smash that like button if you think that sounds like a good biscuit. And look, uh, for more fun rice bubbles recipes, visit kellogg.com.au. Alright, now the underside doesn't really have much, it's just Kellogg's rice bubbles with a nice little convenient barcode for use at the shops. And uh, that only leaves one side left in this rice bubble adventure in which we find ourselves. So let's just jump straight into it. This is what we've been waiting for. It's another recipe. And you could have guessed that this one is the most uh, renowned rice bubbles recipe in all of the history of mankind since the dawn of time. Now, here we have chocolate crackles. So, you gotta get four cups of Kellogg's rice bubble cereal, one cup of icing sugar, one cup of desiccated coconut, 250g's kofa, don't know what that is, kofa, I got no idea what that is, c-o-p-h-a, and three steeple three tablespoons of cocoa and it makes about 24 so what you got to do is one in a large bowl mix Kellogg's rice bubble cereal icing sugar coconut and cocoa slowly melt the cocoa in a saucepan over low heat allow to cool slightly add to rice bubbles mixture stirring until well combined spoon this is three now spoon into Spoon the mixture into paper patty cases and refrigerate until firm. That's just the way I like it. And it says, Kofar is a registered trademark. PLS Foods. Kamalda in New Zealand. I don't know what the fuck that is. I've never heard of Kofar and I don't care about it. Sounds like bullshit. Like, what is it? And why do you need so much of it? It's like the most ingredient. 250 G's of whatever the hell it is. And that's alright. It says the website again. It's got Crackle on here. So, let me just try and enhance on there. Where's Crackle? There he is. Right on top of the uh, things. Alright, there's... I didn't notice before, but there's Snap down here. And our, our boy Pop up there. So, they each make two appearances on the packet. And that's fair, you know? It's not like Snap or Pop or Crackle got a one-up on the others. They're all equal and just as much valued members of society as any other human being. You know what I'm saying? Now, moving straight along. We got the Kellogg's our guarantee to you. So, it says, in Australia since 1924, at Kellogg, we believe quality is the responsibility of everyone, from the farmer to the truck driver. 
The Kowloon Quality System assures the highest quality standards are met so we can deliver the very best products to you. Uh, we appreciate hearing from our customers. Kellogg Consumer Contact Center, that's a lot of k k k Alright. Uh, Kellogg.com.au slash contact us. They got an Australian phone number, 1-800-000-474, and a New Zealand one, which we, we don't really care about. And it says here, this product is sold by weight, not volume. Some settling of contents may have occurred during shipment and handling. Kellogg's Australia PTY Limited, ACN, whatever. 41 to 51 Wentworth Avenue, Pagewood, New South Wales, 2019. That's a pretty good postcode, Australia. Level 1. Ah, oh, that's a New Zealand address. We don't care about that. Registered trademark at Kellogg Australia, PTY Limited, authorised user. Copyright 2018, Kellogg Company. And it says here, where possible, where possible, sometimes it's not possible. Where possible, please ensure that this carton's recycled. And it's got a carton number, we don't care about that. And it says made in Australia from at least 99% Australian ingredients. That's just the way I like it. 1% of the shit they couldn't get in Australia. Probably the Kofar. I don't know. No, that's not even in it, but... Maybe the zinc, they had to outsource that from, uh, uh, you know, some zinky nation out there. Make sure to smash the bell button if your country has a lot of zinc reserves and uh, other such rich mineral deposits. But that's beyond the scope of this video. So now having uh, completed all sides of the rice bubbles box, we're ready to dump, jump, straight into it, and do a Kellogg's Rice Bubbles unboxing, so let's just jump straight into it. Alright, one second. Um, Alright, so I've opened it, and inside what do we get? We get a nice bag of rice bubbles, so that's pretty good. So, I'm gonna open this thing the only way I know how. Um, is it gonna goddamn open easy? Alright. Alright. It's not very good, but it's good enough, I think. So it's open, and we're gonna try and get out a little rice bubble. Let's just not have anything to pour it on. Ah, uh, let's just pour some into my little hand. Or get them everywhere, 350. Alright, that'll do. So, I've got some rice bubbles here. And they look pretty goddamn crunchy, so... Let's just see if we can get what I like to call in the review business. A super close-up of the rice bubbles. All right, this is what one looks like in its purest form. Can we see that? No. Right. Look, that's a rice bubble. All right, we're gonna give it the taste test. Oh, that's pretty crunchy. All right, we'll do another one. All right, that's pretty good. Now these extra ones, look, we might as well do them too. I'm just going to gobble them like the cookie monster. Alright. Goddamn. Alright, look, it tastes pretty good, but let's face it, I'm a cereal kind of guy. And I'm not here to eat dry rice bubbles like some kind of maniac. I'm going to have them with milk, full cream, and sugar. 20 tablespoons, but that's just the way I like it. Make sure to smash that bell button if that's the way you like it as well. Now, look, we're going to do one more test before we do the major bowl of cereal uh, con consumption. So let's do the smell test. Alright, look, 
They don't really smell like much. It kind of smells like cardboard and ink and uh, plastic. If you know what that smells like, make sure to smash the bell button. But I am going to be right back and get myself a spoon and a bowl and uh, sugar and have myself some brekkie. That's what we call it around here. I'll be right back. Alright. I'm back. I've got my bowl. I got my trusty spoon. My bowl's clean and fresh. And I'm gonna have some rice bubbles in here. Uh, okay. One second. I forgot a key ingredient. And that just so happens to be the milk, so I'm gonna have to get that before I proceed. Please stand by while I get the milk. Alright. I've got my trusty Coles brand full cream dairy milk. Shout outs to the farmers for uh, supplying this juicy stuff. Now, I'm just going to put that down for a moment. And this is uh, what we've all been waiting for. I'm going to pour the rice bubbles now. I'm not some FODMAP freak or weirdo out there measuring cups of rice bubbles or anything like that. I'm just gonna let it flow till I feel like I've had enough, so let's just do that. Alright, that's plenty, I think. So let's see if we can see that. Is that too much even? Let me see. I'm a, you know, I'm a pretty big guy. I can handle a lot of rice bubbles, but... Uh, we'll just see how I go. Alright, so... This is what I'm working with. I can't tilt it much more than that. But what I can do... I'm gonna... Leave the spoon out before I put the milk in. Make sure you do that as well, if you're having rice bubbles, so you don't get milk on your spoon before you try and put any sugar on it. Alright, so let's get the milk. We've unleashed the milk. And now we're gonna pour. And here goes. Alright, that should be enough. Now can we hear him snapping and crackling? Let's get a listen. Can you hear that? God damn, that's pretty crackly. Alright, let's see if we can see that. Might not have been in quite enough milk, but it's milked up. Now I'm going to add the sugar. Alright, here, here goes sugar. Wow, that's so crackly. I can hear Snap, Crackle and Pop in there freaking out. They're working overtime. And here goes the sugar. Let me stir that up a little bit. See if we can hear some of that stirring, crackling action. God damn. Alright, well look, I'm going to have a spoonful and then say how I feel, but then I'm going to wait until I've eaten the whole thing before I comment any further. I'm going to put the lid back on my sugar. Uh, the lid back on my milk. Alright. Here we go. Alright, that's pretty goddamn crunchy. So let's just tuck straight into it. Alright. 
God damn. All right. Let me just catch my breath for a second. I mean, God damn. That was a pretty hearty meal. All right. All right. Now look. I still got little rice bubbles in my teeth. But that's beyond the scope of this video. Ah, oh, look. The rice bubbles were pretty good. Um, I put it. I don't know how much it came through, but I did put a pretty big spoonful of sugar on it, and it was too much sugar. The sugar kind of pooled at the bottom of the bowl and was mm, maybe not quite twice as much sugar as I should have had, but like a bit more than uh, necessary. They're pretty sweet anyway, as you saw in the goddamn packet. It's got like 8 G's of sugar per 100 G's or whatever. It's already pretty sugary, but it doesn't come through when you actually sit there and crunch them. It, so you need at least a little bit or something, I think. I don't want to have plain rice bubbles. If I wanted a no additive enhancement, as Mr. Dilmar might call them, if I wanted a no enhancement cereal, I would choose Cocoa Pops. You don't need to put anything in that. Or those flavored oats, or, or Nutrigrain. You don't really need, I don't think you need anything on that, but it's whatever. I always put sugar on rice bubbles, and that's just the way I like it, but this time it was a little bit too much. So let's break it down. They're rice bubbles. They don't really have much of a taste. It's more of a crunchy, kind of ricey, milky sensation when you eat them as a cereal. We're not covering um, the goddamn chocolate cracks and the... Vanilla slices or whatever the hell they had. We're just talking about cereal, breakfast style, family, rice bubble style. And there's a few things you gotta consider when choosing rice bubbles as your breakfast. So you've got a whole, you know, array of cereals in your cupboard or pantry, and you think to yourself, God damn it, which one am I gonna have? And you think, oh, I might have, uh, Sultana brand. Oh no, maybe I'll have just right. Or maybe I'll have the just right with good and coconut. But then all of a sudden you think, now this applies, this what I'm going to get into applies to nearly all cereals, but rice bubbles in particular are pretty at risk of, if you don't eat them fast enough, they lose their crunch completely and it becomes rice. Ah... Uh, Pudding, you know what I mean? It becomes rice. Uh, mm, not so nice. So what I'm getting at is you gotta eat them pretty quick after you add the full cream milk, which is my recommended milk. You've gotta eat them quick, otherwise they get soggy and stupid. But otherwise, you can consider yourself to be in for a nice, crunchy experience, you know, well-rounded. It's got zinc in it, it's got whatever, snap, crackle, and pop, or egg in your own gun. Come on, have another rice bubble. It's like, shut up, you little bastards. I do what I like. But, I do like to have rice bubbles. And, that's just what I've done. And, look, it's good, but it's not amazing. Like... I'll level with you. I would have rather have, um, I would have rather have had Nutrigrain, Wheat Bix with honey, or Wheat Bix with sugar, uh, just about you name it. So that's not sounding very good, but hold on, that's not what I mean to say. It's actually pretty good, it's just not, there's nothing too special about it. It's rice bubbles. I, I can't remember what the 
generic brand ones taste like, but they're pretty similar. But the thing is, that packet I got there was two dollars. I'm pretty sure. At Coles on special. And it was something like 50% off or something. It might have been three dollars. There's no way that thing's worth six dollars though. That's fucking ridiculous. But two dollars. Now that's a price you can go to the... Yeah, that's a price you can count on. How much I had there, I don't know how many G's, like I said, I'm not some FODMAP freak who's weighing my rice bubbles and counting them, but I got enough left to have five or six other good goes of it, if not more, maybe seven. And I'm going to have to try and do that, because I want to make the most of them, because once it's open, they probably start losing their freshness pretty fast, like it said on the packet, if unopened, blah blah blah. It should have said, however, if open, you better get into it, or else. Because that's what it's really like. When I had my last Wheat Bix, big packet I bought. I think it might have even been the packet I bought for review. It's like, I didn't eat enough of them fast enough. And by the next time I wanted them, they'd lost their crunch and were no longer acceptable or up to my high serial standards that I like to uphold in my family. That's beyond the scope of this video. The bottom line of what I'm getting at is rice bubbles are okay. They're not amazing, but they get the job done. They're quite filling, quite easy to eat. It's like, you know, you only have to crunch them once and they're ready to go. They're not like a I guess most cereals are kind of like that, but it's like, you know, it's a easy eat, a rice bubble bowl for a meal, I think. Maybe if you have too much, you got to get the quantities right. See, too much milk will make it not, you'll lose the crunch impact. Not enough milk, well, you'll, it'll get drowned out by the rice bubbles and it'll be too crunchy and too dry and fucked so you gotta you know get the balances right but then if you do that add a bit of sugar and uh, stir it up a bit quickly you gotta stir quick otherwise you're losing crunch the crunch half-life is like 0.1 per 10 seconds. I'm not even kidding about that. That's a uh, scientific fact. As verified by me. Ah, uh, yeah, you lose crunch anyway, and whatever. It's not good after that, so you gotta stir quick, kinda eat quick, which is easy because they're rice bubbles, and then you've had a good meal. And that's alright, but the bottom line of it all is. They're not that special. They've only got the three star health rating. They've scammed the goddamn FODMAP community and get into giving them the seal of approval, but it's like, that doesn't even matter to me. The packet, well, it does, it's nice, recognizable blue color. They got the little crackle and pop fucking pixie guys and uh, imps, whatever the hell they are. And they're kind of enticing you, they go, go on, have some rice bubbles. It's like, alright guys, I'll have them when I'm ready. And it's okay, but it's not like, oh yeah, I'm feeling good. It's like, yeah, like I said, I would have preferred Wheat Bix. But that's alright. They were pretty good. And it leads me to the sad yet true uh, outcome of this review, which is rice bubbles only buy them on special no let's get one last look at the packet this is just okay it's not amazing so excuse me i'm gonna do my best to kind of you know i've scrunched down the little plastic bit of it to try and keep it fresh. I'm going to put them away into my cupboard or pantry so it's in a, you know, safe chamber. 
where it doesn't, it gets as little as possible interference with it. Until the next time that I have them. And that's gonna be okay. Like I said, it's only okay. It's not like I'm gonna be looking forward to my next rice bubble. I'm only gonna be, um, just eating them just because I got them. So, but on special, two dollars, it's worth it. Slap them in the trolley. But otherwise, forget it. It's a piece of shit. And that's just about all I've got to say about them. Um, they're crunchy. They're crackling and popping like a rock concert. And, um... They're FODMAP certified. So, using that, the next time you're exercising your serial purchasing power at the shops, you can think to yourself and do the crunch, the stats, and the facts, and the figures as I've delivered them, and say to yourself, well, it's got the FODMAP, and it's got the zinc, and the next time you might think to yourself, ah, oh, nah, no, I'm just gonna get Special K. Hold it right there. It's not all about Special K and the boxing and the goddamn power or whatever, devour. It's like, no guys, have a rice bubble. There's no pressure, it's just snack, crackle and pop going, come on, come on. And uh, it's, it's pretty fun for the whole family. I like them. Kids love them. They've got recipes in there to get you in the kitchen with the special treats and the chocolate crackles. And what more could you really ask for in a puffed rice cereal? Like, except for Cocoa Pop Puffs. Cocoa Pops. Cocoa Pops. Right? I think I might have called them Cocoa Puffs earlier. But that's beyond the scope of this uh, section of this review. We'll just say that Cocoa Pops are better than Rice Bubbles in every aspect. Except for maybe the price, because they're a pretty popular cereal, because they, they make milk fun, right? That's what it says, or is that Nesquik? Oh no, it's just like a chocolate milkshake, only crunchy. With the little chimpanzee or whatever the hell he is, swinging around. Like Diddy Kong in Temple Tempest. That's way outside of the goddamn scope of this video. Uh, yeah, rice bubbles. Okay, but nowhere near as good as Cocoa Pops. And nowhere near really as good as any other cereal. They're just okay. They're kind of like a generic, non-invasive cereal that doesn't go too much in any direction. They're just pretty bland, pretty crunchy, and pretty okay. Um, yeah, that's rice bubbles, and now that the choice, the power's in your hands, it's like, knowing this, you could go to the shops and slap them in the trolley on special, or you could see the little snap, crackle, and pop grinning at you from the packet and go and say, get out of here, you pieces of shit. Not today. I know you're crunchy and I know you're crackly, but it's just not goddamn good enough. That's probably what I'm going to be saying for the next couple of years. It's like, unless it's a goddamn juicy special, like 80% off, I can handle that. But just as it is, I think I'd rather get any cereal um, that comes to mind. Except for Special K. There's no way you'd catch me buying that kind of shit. It's just not the kind of guy I am. Uh, but anyway, that's, we're coming to the close of this Rice Bubbles review. And I'd like to say thank you for watching. Make sure to smash that follow button on my Twitter for all the latest Rice Bubbles exploits and uh, scandals. And until then, we'll catch you next time, only 
on DOS 350 underscore legit at Twitter. Make sure to tap that. <laughs>